Does your pool booster pump make a loud sound? Did it stop working? Do you either want to replace it or fix it? Stick around and in this video I will show you how to replace or repair your pool booster pump. Hi, I'm Jake and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your pool booster pump in under 15 minutes. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna tear down that old booster pump all the way to its core and show you where the pump began to fail and what items are replaceable if you want to try to fix it yourself. This booster pump is about three years old and it's been working great. It's been nice and quiet, but recently it started to get noisy and you could tell that something was wrong. It was peaking at around 86 decibels and making a loud grinding sound. It used to be very quiet at 65 decibels with all the pool equipment running. And so I did some research online and many others are having the exact same issue as myself. People complained about a rear bearing failure. And inside there's a ball bearing similar to a skateboard wheel that gets rusted over time. Most likely this is from a failed seal inside or rain or just poor system design. This pump is used to operate a Polaris 280 pool robot, which is a cleaning vacuum, and it uses pressurized water to operate that robot 365 days a year and has been working great with only minor repairs for the last five years. Okay, step one, you need to source a suitable replacement. Either replace it with the exact same pump because you know everything's gonna fit or choose uh, one of several equivalent pumps, which I'll put in the description below. There's uh, pumps by Polaris, Pentair, and a few others. They range from about $300 to $500. They all come with the adapters uh, and a standard size of the piping. And in my case, I chose the new Polaris PB4SQ because it's both small and quiet. A lot of these pumps, they want you to have them installed by an authorized dealer, which will cost another two to $500. And with that, you'll get the one year warranty. If you don't have it installed by an authorized dealer, then a lot of times the warranty will fall considerably down to something like 60 days or even less. So it is a small risk if you do it yourself, but in the end, you're gonna save hundreds of dollars. So you could buy a whole new pump even if there um, was a warranty issue. Now, do not remove the old pump until you have your new one. You need that in place to keep your pool running and the normal pump circulating. Um, if you did already remove it or something else has occurred, you can put a loop in place here to keep your pool system essentially from bleeding out the water. And I'll show a little clip of how I did that. Okay, the tools you will need is a Phillips and regular screwdriver, Teflon tape, a hairdryer or heat gun, large channel locks, wire cutter or strippers, and a PVC pipe cutter makes it really easy to cut that new white flex pipe. Also, if you have a multimeter or electrical safety tester, that would be great. I'll put a link below of all the tools that I used here. Now that you have a suitable replacement pump and tools, step two is to shut off the power and secure any circuit breakers from being turned back on. I'd start by turning off either your mechanical timer, or in my case, I have a digital timer, so I will put the box into service mode and that will prevent the automatic timer from turning on if it is scheduled to do so at a certain time. But I don't wanna stop there, I wanna take it a step further and I will turn off the associated circuit breakers for that pump that are labeled cleaner on my box so it cannot provide power to those wires as I'm going to be touching them. You can probably even take it a step further and turn off the circuit breakers that lead to your entire pool equipment from the house or from the street. And also I would close the timer boxes and put a note on them to not touch so that a family member or kid doesn't accidentally turn them on the next day if he didn't finish the project or something. Now that the power's off, I'm gonna remove the electrical access panel on this pump. Uh, it's four Phillips screws and we're gonna pull out this electrical tester to verify that the power has been shut off. 
We're working with either 120 or 220 volts in this location, so this is something that you need to be careful and you could get hurt if the power was left on. I have verified that the power is off and now I will take a few photos on my phone so I can remember how the wires are connected and then I will begin removing them. There will be two power wires to remove along with a green wire for the ground and a copper bonding wire on the outside. Your new pump will come with four black plastic connectors and two will need to be screwed into the pump. On the Polaris PB4SQ, they suggest four to six wraps of Teflon tape in the opposite direction that will be turning in order to create a watertight seal. These are tapered fittings, so they will get tighter as they are screwed in and they don't specify how tight, so I went halfway before it got hard and decided it would be easier to tighten more later if it drips and I did not want to over tighten it at this point. Remove the electrical cap and decide how you're going to be wiring this. It comes preset at 220 volts with a white jumper wire in the middle. If your system is 120 volts, you can refer to the manual in the video description below on how to rewire this area by moving one of the jumpers. But for the 220 volt setup, there's an L1 and an L2 screw that is empty, which we will attach to and the green wire will go to the ground. Okay, time to swap out the pumps. With your pool system still off, remove the two white hoses and cut new pieces of hose with the PVC cutters that will match the existing length. Use the existing style connectors that are on the pool's PVC pipe because they may have different threads than the ones that came with your new pump. And then the new black connectors that did come with the pump, those will go um, into that side of the pump. A heat gun is super helpful here to soften the pipe and allow it to slide on with ease. And then you want to only hand tighten these connectors. You don't want to over tighten and crush the white pipe. Many of these booster pumps are secured to the ground by either one, two, or actually no screws. The white pipe is solid enough to keep it in place as there's little torque movement when it turns on and off, but the manual does state to secure it with an expansion anchor to the concrete pad if you want to reduce noise levels. Okay, now we're ready to wire it up. At first I tried the side conduit connector, but my wires were a bit too short and would be under stress at all times. So I decided to use the rear conduit opening and I had to cut off the existing connectors and strip the wires a bit to fit the terminal connectors. Okay, we're almost done, but don't forget the copper bonding wire in the back. When it's safe to do so, you can turn your power back on and we want to turn on your circulation pump because these pumps are not self priming. So they need to have water before we turn on this pump. Okay, so we'll turn on the booster pump now and we're gonna check for leaks. And in mine, it did start leaking right away at the drain plug. So it wasn't tightened from the factory. So check all connections and look for any drips. If it is dripping, you'll probably need to hand tighten those connectors a bit more. Okay, once you're done with your electrical work, you can put the cap back on with your Phillips screws. And then I wanna do a quick sound level check to show you what the difference is. So. It's 60 decibels with just my pool. And then with this pump kicked on, it's up to 64 now. And it was 86 with a bad bearing. So much, much quieter with this pump. Okay, that's the end of replacing this pool booster pump. If this was helpful, please give us a like and a subscribe. And if you wanna stick around, I'll show you uh, the disassembly of one of these pumps. And I'll show you how to replace the bad bearing and the seal inside. First, this is a medium to advanced repair, so just know that going into it. 
Um, you can get new bearings on Amazon for about $10 and a new seal for about $15. So you might be into it for $25 for the repair, but it's going to take a lot of time and effort to disassemble this thing and get it back together. So with that um, being said, let's go for it. Okay, so before you take the pump apart, it's gonna be full of water. So put it upside down or forward and drain the water out or use the drain plug at the bottom. And then you wanna release all these Allen uh, screws here and that'll open the pump housing and part of this video you're going to be seeing me trying to figure out how this all goes together so that i know how to put it back at the end but a big o-ring in the front this is a metal cap in the back a flat screwdriver can pry that off and i struggled with this fan blade a lot so i left it until further in the process um, you can use pliers to hold that metal screw in the back and that will allow you to undo the pump here and all this just slides off the shaft that was difficult to figure out at first and here it's revealing the water seal this is the seal that probably leaked that led to the bearing failure you would want to replace this seal right here so replace that with a new one and replace two new bearings and that should solve your issue of the noise and I'm just keeping track of what order everything goes. So there's a rubber washer, then the seal. And then the back housing, you can just tap it lightly and it will slide off the shaft here. None of this stuff comes off easy since it's been in place for three, four years, salt water, corrosion in the area. But eventually, with enough tapping, it comes off. And your goal is to replace that bearing on the shaft, which is very rusted, without damaging the shaft or bending anything. It was very confusing when I opened it up because it looked like there was a metal ring there that was going to make this impossible. But that's actually just rust buildup. So here I am showing you where that bearing sits. And so... Next, we need to get the fan blade off. I ended up just breaking the fan blade, cracking it with a screwdriver in order to get it off because it was just too stuck in place. And then here I am tapping to get the other bearing out of the housing. And there is a metal O-ring inside there. Now, here's what you have to work with. You need to get those two bearings off. One of them is very easy to get off, the one to the right, because you can use a bearing puller off Amazon for, I don't know, $10, $15, and it comes right off. The other bearing is much deeper on that shaft, and I didn't have a bearing puller that long. And even if I wanted to buy one that long, they were like $70 or $80. So I used a crescent wrench, and I put a crescent wrench underneath um, that bearing, and I secured it, and I lightly tapped with the hammer over and over while going in different directions, um, spinning that shaft until it finally loosened up. But I did have to put some penetrating oil for 24 hours to help it out and you can see it is very rusted on that shaft and it was almost um, secured in place but um, when I took the bearing off it was very rusted and here we want to clean up some of the shaft of where the new bearing is going to be slid back into place I'll put a link in the description below for the exact bearings for this exact model and there are numbers on the side of the bearing so if you don't know pull the bearing off look at the number and order accordingly you're not going to find these bearings in a spare parts manual for pentair or polaris pumps because these motors are made by a different company actually so you'll need to get the model number off the bearing in order to order a replacement now we need to tap the bearings back onto the shaft using a plastic PVC pipe so we don't bend or hurt anything and then use a block of wood on the bottom so that you don't scratch up um, that shaft or or hurt anything take your time go left right over and over and then clean it off with some brake fluid cleaner because that's going to be inside your electrical engine and you want that nice and clean Okay, now I start the reassembly process. You're gonna kinda on your own on this one because it took me two attempts to put it back together in the right order. I got it all back together and then found an extra washer so I did take it back apart again. 
but I replaced this plastic fan with a new one. I'll put a link in the description below for a new fan. You don't want to operate it without a fan, it'll get too warm. But um, suggest that you take your time, um, keep track of what order you took everything off the shaft and put it back together. Here I'm using some water-based lube on all the O-rings. Um, I like that better than petroleum because it doesn't degrade the rubber O-ring. I'm using a small hammer so I don't create any dents or damage and I tap lightly and that really helps to work the metal housing back into place and also when I was removing it. And this is the four large bolts off the back of the housing that go into place. Okay, there's a big rubber O-ring there, then we slide this back into place and then that's where you'll want to add your new shaft seal. I'll put a link in the description below for a new shaft seal. And then next up, you just start reassembling the pump in the same order. It can only go on the shaft um, in one alignment, so you gotta play with it until you can get it to all slide back down. Then another rubber O-ring to lube up here, and then eventually your pump housing will go back into place here, and then we'll reattach our Allen bolts. But it did take some playing here to get this to sit back all the way down and I think this is where I had forgotten to reattach the, the pump with this bolt. So here I am going backwards, um, tightening this up, and that'll compress it enough for the housing to sit back on. Okay, tighten up your pump housing with the Allen bolts. Reassemble your fan. I put the old one back on, but I actually ended up buying a new one. So I waited a day or two and put a new fan blade on here. I'll put a description below if you need a new fan blade, but hopefully you figure out a better way to get it off than me. Okay, that's the end. I hope this works for you guys that want to try to repair it. I just went ahead and replaced it ahead of time and then here I am playing with the pump later on for the video to help share with others of how to fix it. But uh, no guarantees it'll all work out, so try your best. At least the parts are very cheap. And we'll see you on the next video.